If you look at the Gospels, hopefully you have come to the realization, conclusion that one of Jesus' most effective ways of teaching was by telling stories. And if it was good enough for Jesus, I have tried over many years to do the same thing. You know that I have shared many, many stories with you. And so as I was preparing for this feast of Christ's body and blood, rather than getting caught up in a whole big doctrinal explanation which wouldn't be my style anyway. Um, not real strong on doctrine, and the thing I like most about dogma is that it has the word dog in it, but <laughs> neither here nor there. But I went back through my files of stories, and pulled out several that I think I want to, to use to just remind us what the Eucharist, what Christ's gift of himself in his body and blood is really meant to be about. Why it is such a big deal for us as Catholic Christians. The first one's very short. And it just said, we see the monstrance. We see pieces of bread behind gold and glass. And we look on it as though it was a thing. But it is a person. One we can talk to. In this day and age, we are moving more and more to a focus on the Eucharist as the object of devotion or prayer. We have Eucharistic devotions. We have the devotional chapel. And there's a lot of spiritual grace, a lot of spiritual power in that, but there also can be a danger in that we objectify the Eucharist. We make it something that God has given us for its own sake, something static rather than dynamic. remind us that Jesus didn't say, take this, all of you, and look at it, but rather take this and eat it and drink it. This is my body given up for you. This is my blood to be poured out for you. Christ being very active in his body and blood. And as always, in John's Gospel, there is another layer of meaning. The food they had eaten was real enough, but it symbolized another kind of food that he was providing for another kind of hunger. I am the bread of life, he said. I am what satisfies the deepest needs of humanity. I am the most intimate reality in your life as intimate to you, as sustaining as the food in your mouth. I am the one who keeps your awareness bright like a lamp, your heart warm, your will healthy, strong and gentle. 
I am the one who enables you to raise your eyes to see beauty and glory in the world and to open the eye of your spirit until you see God. So that's not the Eucharist in its own self-contained reality. That is the Eucharist in terms of the effect that it can have on us. And that's much more as it should be. But if in fact that Eucharist does have an effect like that on us, then it challenges us to be a certain kind of church. I've only used this story once that I can remember. Four years ago at the Easter Vigil, when we were welcoming our new Catholics into the faith, I shared this story with them as a statement of how they need to understand themselves as being church. And it's a challenge to us as well. I love this story. Tony, a local youth minister, was preparing to give a retreat for the kids, and he couldn't get his thoughts together. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and he said, I just got to have a break here. So he went down to the local diner to get a cup of coffee. While he was sitting there at the counter, three guys came in, three bums as he called them, down and outers. And one of them said to the others in a kind of half drunk voice, tomorrow's my birthday. One of the other guys said, so what? And they had a cup of coffee and left. After they left, Tony said to the waiter, these guys come in here all the time? The waiter answered, yeah. They come in here every night around 2 o'clock. They have some kind of crummy watchman's job at the factory. So Tony said to the waiter, I overheard the guy say that it's his birthday. What do you say? He'll be here around 2 tomorrow morning. Let's throw him a party. Yeah said the waiter, why not? So Tony got some decorations and he got some kids from the retreat and he got a big birthday cake and they spread the word around. Tony told me that around two o'clock the three bums came in and lo and behold the diner was filled with people and they sang happy birthday to Rob. Rob was so overcome when they presented him with the birthday cake that he was speechless for the moment. Then he collected himself and asked if he could take the cake home instead of eating it there. He wanted to take it home so he could look at it. No one had ever given him a cake before in his life. After the party was over, there was an interesting conversation. The waiter leaned on his elbow on the diner counter and looked across at Tony and said to him, I bet you belong to some church. And Tony, like the father in the parable of the prodigal son, responded, I belong to the church that throws parties for bums at 2 o'clock in the morning. The waiter looked at him and said, if I could find a church like that, I'd join it in the morning. The Eucharist, in a way, becomes a mirror, becomes a challenge. Who are we? Who are we trying to be? 
and especially for this parish with what has taken place in these last many months of pandemic and restrictions. The unity, the energy, the care for one another that this parish is known for. A lot of that we lost some of our momentum. And now that we're coming together more and more, we've got to be getting that back, especially the caring part. Of course, this parish has a heart. We need to be working to bring more energy to that heart. Not to make it the way it was before, but to help it to be even more than it ever was. That we would be a people that could see ourselves in that statement. We belong to the church that throws parties for bums at two in the morning. Okay, maybe not literally. Father Lynn didn't want to do anything at two in the morning, but but nevertheless, that desire to be the, together, to be the living body of Christ. Eucharist not just on the altar, Eucharist in the pews, Eucharist in the heart. And the same is true for us as individuals. A student relates about a time her professor gave a pop quiz. She was a conscientious student and breezed through the questions. That is, until she read the last one. What is the name of the woman who cleans this floor of the building? The student knew the woman referred to in the question. She'd seen her many times. She was tall, dark-haired, probably in her 50s. But the student had, a ha had to hand in her paper, leaving the last question blank. <coughs> when another student complained and asked if the last question would count toward the grade, the professor replied, absolutely. In your careers, you will meet many people. All of them are significant. They deserve your attention and care, even if all you can do is smile and say hello. It was an example the students never forgot. And by the way, the cleaning woman's name was Dorothy. We may never remember all the names, but when do we ever have an excuse not to care? I am the bread of life. I am the bread that gives life. I am the bread that calls you to life. And no life, not yours or anyone else's, is unimportant. <laughs>